video, we're going to talk about tasks to automate in a SOC or security center environment. Why? Why talk about automation? For one thing, it's been actually been it's been going on for quite some time with the different technologies that we use in a SOC environment, such as the SIM and the SOAR. So when it comes to la, la, log centralization, collection of logs and triage, as well as uh, incident response, uh, automation has been a critical part uh, of these activities. However, uh, there are still a few, or there are still problems or challenges that uh, a SOC team uh, face faces, and these are one high cost of data breach, which leads to loss and bank bankruptcy of the business. So, depending on the size of the organization, it's not necessarily bankruptcy, but a significant loss not only tangible losses but also intangible losses such as loss in reputation and long uh, and other potential projects that they that the business could have won uh, if the data breach did not, did not occur so that's one high cost of, uh, of data breach and other similar events and of course the high volume of alerts leading to burnout for SOC analysts or virus team members in the SOC so uh, it's no secret that uh, burnout and fatigue is common, especially when you're really looking at the different alerts that's coming in. And you're not just looking at one tool, but you're looking at two or three, four, ten tools, ten screens. Uh, it's not necessarily the case, uh, but yeah, you, most of the time th there, there, may be a, there can be a need to look at different uh, tools for uh, in order for you to do analysis in the SOC and of course there's high there's the possibility of high turnover rate uh, leading to low organizational knowledge meaning uh, the people in the team that are aware of the landscape they're aware of the environment the tools they they have relationships with people in from different departments these people because of the uh, burnout, fatigue, and other uh, similar uh, problems in the team, uh, they may eventually decide to move to another department or, or uh, leave for another company. And it's not a uncommon uh, uh, issue since most of the SOCs are dealing with these concerns. So high cost of data breach and similar events, high volume alerts leading to, to burnout and high turnover rate these are some of the challenges wherein automation can help. So as an outline, what we're going to talk about are the tasks that we, that we can automate in a SOC environment. And later on, the tools. And in succeeding videos, we can do demos of these various tasks. So one of the basic, one of the tasks that uh, can benefit from automation is asset inventory so for example uh, in a medium to large uh, scale organization um, devices are being uh, registered into the environment or into the organization and devices that are four or five uh, years in the service or were lost for for whatever reason are being read are being are removed from the organization so the the process the routine part of this process wherein you fill out the form uh, you fill out the form registering a new device or you fill out the form the details uh, removing that device those routine steps can be automated and uh, more often than not uh, you're using some sort of ITSM platform wherein you input into that ITSM platform so those steps where you have a technical support uh, who's inputting these devices individually into the ITSM or form, um, these 
steps, routine steps can be automated uh, in such a way that the technical support will focus on other tasks rather than just manually inputting these, these data. So that would be a lot of time saving, especially for service desk technical support roles within uh, which may help in securing devices uh, faster or identifying devices faster, especially when, in, when it comes to incident response. Asset inventory is a foundational thing when it comes to being able to determine what devices you're dealing with. So another thing that we can automate is log collection and triage. And this is the most common thing. Uh, this is what people in the business look into when they look into tools. Okay, they, uh, when when the team or the department or the business did, uh, determines that they want to uh, vamp up the security of the business, they usually decide to um, buy or use a certain SIM for uh, to automate user behavior. Uh, user behavior heuristics and other related alerts and creating detection rules and measuring security risks and having some sort of security score and being able to triage risky users, risky identities and to show that in a dashboard. So these are the things that are automated by the tools that we have in a SOC and uh, usually when those tools have been decided at the start of the SOC team or department. You usually don't change those things that much unless, of course, a new technology significantly better uh, comes in. So uh, log collection and triage, uh, these are, again, uh, uh, tasks that uh, automation can really have a significant effect and significant benefit. So another one would be data enrichment. So when you say data enrichment, so when it comes to mitigating alerts, so we have alert validation or correlation. So when a, when alert comes to you or when you check an alert, of course, red data is already there. However, you want to validate it with other uh, information or data sources. So the process of correlating and getting that information from the various tools, uh, assuming that maybe you don't have a platform that has the api keys to automatically retrieve all those data into one platform so you're getting it from various platforms from various sites from various screens um, automation can help get those information routine in a routine manner from those various sources so when it comes to accessing open source intelligence and related intelligence feeds related to that alert okay uh, it would be very cumbersome to to check uh, these data points uh, for correlation one by one so when it comes to open source intelligence okay you can automate filtering out open source intelligence related to the alert and of course the same thing can be done with internal data sources so when it comes to compliance checks as well, so if you have a standard checklist for compliance, for example, you want to check if BitLocker or the hard drive is encrypted or if the OS is updated and if uh, the security updates are present or missing, okay, those particular routine checks can be automated. And another thing, when it comes to software, unwanted software or software deny list, so rather than manually checking each software installed in each device, whether it's part of a deny or the deny list or not, you can automate the comparison of the deny list versus the list of software installed in a device in such a way that uh, rather than taking 15 to 30 minutes, it only takes you a minute to determine whether or not there is an unwanted software in that machine or device. Another thing would be to protect. Uh, to protect the device, the instance, to protect the device instance or uh, basically any resource in an organization. So, so for example, 
after the data collection, the SOC analyst does the analysis part, uh, the out of the box, creative thinking part. Uh, after all of those things, it's decided that uh, you need to block or you need to remediate or take, take action or do an incident response based on the analysis of the alert or incident. So in some cases, you're not just dealing with one device or one resource or one app. You're dealing with maybe 10 or 20 or perhaps 100 devices, and maybe thousands of devices, depending on the scale of the incident or the breach. So one thing that we can do is upon uh, using some sort of query language to get the list of devices that are affected, if we want to isolate or block the device, uh, we can do so uh, by uh, running a scripting language to block those devices coming from a sort uh, uh, from a list. So if you have a list in a CSV file of those devices you need to block, you input them, you input that uh, CSV file to the script, and that script runs uh, runs provided that you have the significant privileges into your um, a technology pla uh, uh, security platform in order to block all those devices from that list. So if, for example, you're not talking about devices, but you're talking about applications or softwares, software that is in, in those machines. So if you want, if you decide to block apps from a list, from a list of devices, you can do so uh, not manually, but through automation. Another thing would be so if you are speculating that a malware has infected a group of devices, why rather than manually triggering uh, an antivirus scan for all those devices, why not run an antivirus scan for all those devices coming from a list? So again, these activities will involve uh, running from a list and using some sort of scripting language, it could be PowerShell, could be Bash, could be something else in relation to uh, the security platform that you are using in your environment. So one of the neglected activities or what people don't really uh, look at when it comes to a security environment is there's, there's always some form of documentation. So in that, in that documentation, documentation of an alert or an incident, there are a few key tasks that are routine that you need to do all the time. So one of the things that we can do is when it, when it comes to attaching relevant artifacts or screenshots or investigation packages or CSV files or list of involved, div, uh, involved, uh, involved machines or devices. So rather than attaching all those one by one, all right, why, not, why not have a script to gather all this data, so if you're if the data uh, data correlation and data gathering from various uh, from various resources has been automated, why not pull all those uh, information into a CSV zip file or whatnot and attach them automatically into the ITSM platform? So when it comes to filling up forms. Uh, so for example, if you have ServiceNow and there are certain aspects of the form that uh, that are filled up pretty much in a, the same pattern or in the same way all, always for a certain set of incidents, for a certain set of alerts, why not rather than spending maybe 30 seconds to a minute for that routine aspect, why not? automate that so that it would consume not 30 seconds, not a minute, but around uh, five, five to 10 seconds and you're done. And when it comes to the end of the documentation, so you usually have some sort of summary as a description. So why, if, if for a certain category of alerts, you already know what information you need to put for the summary of that particular incident. So why not automate uh, report summary generation as well. When it comes to backups and retention, so um, 
these things, as much as possible, should be automated and would no, no longer need manual intervention. So uh, it's important that we collect logs. The average length of a breach, data uh, detection of a certain uh, major incident or data breach is around 200 days. So that's not really good, but this is a statistic, I believe, from 2020. So uh, in order to investigate those kinds of major incidents, it's important that the logs and other related information should be retained as well. So retention policy, implementing that retention policy, managing the storage for the backup of uh, all necessary information and logs uh, should be uh, automated. And of course, uh, the tools. So the thing is, there's a lot of tools out there, but uh, here are some of the tools that I believe uh, you, anybody can start with, uh, with the basic, uh, to do basic automation. So one would be scripting. We should have some sort of knowledge for PowerShell and Bash. And of course, um, we, we need to have some sort of, some knowledge when it comes to Python. Not necessarily Python, it could be any programming language, uh, but it just so happens that Python is one of those languages that is uh, used, uh, used in different applications. In this case, for data mining, web scraping, API interaction, RPA robot process automation. So Python has a lot of libraries, uh, such as Beautiful Soup uh, 4, BS4, and Selenium, when it when in, uh, which are used for interacting with various websites or web pages or web apps. So these are just some of the tools. There are more tools that you can use, but if you're looking into automating things, not only for your SOC, but maybe for some related business process, uh, these are some of the tools that you can look, look into. So I'm gonna cut it here. Uh, on the next video, I would be digging more on specific use cases and doing example demos using open source uh, open source tools and uh, one of the things that is a challenge when it comes to automation is that even though you let's say you're able to do it you're basically you're able to implement and test uh, these tools and automations first in a non-production or personal device you're testing it out uh, it's another issue altogether when, you, when you're trying to implement it in a production environment. So make sure that uh, if you're doing and if you're playing around with automation, make sure to uh, check in first with your with your manager or the SOC lead, it, just to make sure that these automations does not break anything or any other application uh, within the security uh, operations center. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you. Uh, for listening and I hope that this information has been of help to you as well here at CyberSkill Farm empowering IT professionals.